Welcome to this week's Stewards Inquiry, sponsored by Mansion Bet. As always, we'll continue our look ahead to the Cheltenham Festival, which is now just over two weeks away, and we'll also be reflecting back on some intriguing stuff from the weekend. And Martin, once again, we learned plenty from the weekend, didn't we? We did, yeah. The, the flat season's even gearing up. We'll talk a little bit about that, won't we? Um, there was some good national hunt action at Kempton. Obviously, you're at that point where you're sort of so close to the Cheltenham Festival, really, that the juvenile hurdle on Saturday that we'll be looking at in a little bit more detail was probably the biggest clue that you'll get for the spring festival races. But there was still some really competitive stuff at the weekend. It was good. Yeah, last week was lovely. It actually feels like spring now and it feels like the flat season is just around the corner. And you know that when we've just had the winter derby. Once again, John Gosden wasn't a massive surprise winning with the Forest of Dean. And that to me was a particularly good training performance because he's a horse that's had clearly plenty of time off but problems with it. Yeah, he had that brilliant season as a three-year-old where he was really progressive Forest of Dean through the handicap ranks. And he looked at that point like he, he might be that that group performer and obviously then he had to have time off the track he missed last year essentially had 15 months off as a result of an injury so it's just taken him a little bit of time to to come to the boil come back to himself but John Gosden has really started to earmark the winter derby as a target for his horses or some of his horses over the last three or four years really it was often a race previously that he ducked away from didn't necessarily target a horse at through the all-weather season but with the emergence of all-weather finals day and the big money on offer at the East, in the Easter Classic, which is the same course and distance as, as the Winter Derby, sort of started to use the Winter Derby as a stepping stone towards the Easter Classic now. And no doubt that will be the target for Forrest of Dean. I thought Rab Havlin gave him a really good ride as well. He just had him always in position A behind the leader. They, they weren't going too quick. He made his moves at the right time. And it was a race where tactics made the difference. For me, I think Felix actually was probably the best horse in the race who finished second, um, but he missed the break. That's his natural way of being ridden anyway. He misses the break, gets a little bit behind and comes from the back. So he's reliant, Felix, on them going quite hard in front. They didn't go hard enough for him. And Rab Havlin took advantage on Forest of Dean. Yeah, they'd actually met a couple of times going into this race, hadn't they, previously? And Felix had come out on top on both occasions, but not on Saturday. It went the way of Forest of Dean. Rob Havlin and John Gosden. Well, the riding honours of the day undoubtedly went to former champion jockey Ryan Moore, who Martin landed a four-timer and it nearly was six with two close seconds. Yeah, absolutely. He seems to be riding out of his skin, doesn't he? We don't see Ryan riding day in, day out on the all-weather, but it's the second recent Saturday where he's, uh, he's, he's gone to Lingfield and produced the goods and ridden multiple winners. And yeah, good to see him riding with such confidence at the moment. He actually had four different winners for four different trainers. And he's always a jockey that's going to have lots of ammunition with big yards behind him. But last year it wasn't his best and it's just good to see him back on a roll, isn't it? And hopefully he'll go into this year with, with huge amounts of confidence. And that's absolutely key for a jockey. It really is, yeah. I mean, you need to have your eye in. You need to be riding confidently. It's a, a jockey ship you've, you've got to make snap decisions in a race haven't you where things are happening very quickly around you and the decision you make in an, in, in an instant essentially can be the difference between winning and losing so we know Ryan's quality he's been at the top of the game for 10 years plus now hasn't he uh, riding multiple multiple group one winners all around the world um, so it's good to see him riding with such confidence and I'm sure there'll be some big days ahead for him this year. Well switching on attention now to the jumps and there was a really good card at Kempton and again there were key Cheltenham clues because Tritonic is a horse that has had a pretty big reputation and he completely delivered and was very impressive from lots of different perspectives wasn't he? Yeah I mean it's very rare that you get a horse of his calibre as a flat horse that goes juvenile hurdling but that's what he was always ought to do I think that was always the plan from a long way out is with the right trainer of course with with Alan King to sort of make that seamless move from top flat handicapper into hurdler um, Alan's done it with so many horses over the years and essentially they are schooled from quite an early stage they very much know their jobs when they go hurdling and we've seen that from Tritonic with with both of his wins so far 
um, over hurdles. So he's got the ability. There's no question of that from the quality that he achieved on the flat. He's got high level mile and a quarter form even on the flat. So he's quite a quick horse. We know that from his flat days. And yet he's taken to hurdling really well. I was particularly impressed with how he dealt with Kempton because you watch his previous run back at Ascot. Took him a little bit of time to peg back Casalupi, the front runner that day. And there was just a, an element of doubt as to whether Kempton quicker track you know a little bit sharper not quite so much of a finishing stretch um whether it, it could catch him out but it certainly didn't and he really showed a blistering turn of foot late on he went quicker than the uh, handicap hurdle winner on the card hometown boy who was winning off a mark of 130 so he's no slouch at all and he went quicker than him uh, much quicker than him in the closing sectional so it was an impressive display all around I think one thing I would say about him I think he's jumping with regards to the mm -hmm. Cheltenham Festival and the Triumph just needs to slicken up a little bit now it might get there because he's only two starts in and actually I thought he was a little bit better on that score at Kempton than he was at Ascot but he still missed out the third last and Adrian Heskin just had to get after him a little bit after that um, so that's something that he needs to improve on a little bit but what will help him is that if we think forward to the triumph hurdle they only jump two flights of hurdles in I think the last six furlongs from the top of the hill and so there's an awful lot of galloping to be done uh, so just the set out and the layup layout of the track at, at Cheltenham could really play to his strengths. He's now a best price 130 with mansion bet how do you think he figures um, in the race now he's got to be a huge contender hasn't he? Oh, he's a massive player um, I would stop short of saying I was lulled in to be backing him at this moment in time. Um, you know, there's still a, a few weeks to the race. There's no need to, to be playing your hand just yet. I don't think even at, at that price. He's been trimmed in a little bit over the last 48 hours uh, since he, he did his winning. So I think a few people have already joined the bandwagon a little bit. And let's be fair, he's taking on Zana here, who there is no doubt is a, a very very high class juvenile himself and he's a horse that does jump extremely quickly and accurately so it's just a, an exciting race again another race that has really developed over over the weekend with Tritonic's win um, into an exciting clash at the Cheltenham Festival. Yeah sure and then in the novices chase Shiskin's form was certainly given a boost by Tamarack de Mata who was also quite impressive for Paul Nichols. He was, yeah. I was speaking to Harry Cobden just quickly afterwards. He said, how good is Shishkin? Um, and it's a fair <laughs> point. He, you know, he left him for dead, didn't he, completely? And um, Tamarok de Matan, aside from Shishkin, possibly the best sort of two to two and a half mile novice chaser, certainly one of the best two to two and a half mile novice chasers that we've got in Britain. And Shishkin just left him. Um, as if he was standing still at Kempton over Christmas. So, yeah, there's there's no questioning Shishkin's ability and sort of his form achievements as well after what Tamarok de Matan did on Saturday because he was a very easy winner from Gar Law. Gar Law himself had won the Rising Stars a grade two contest at Wincanton earlier on in the season. So it's all kind of stacking up and telling you that, that Shishkin very much is the real deal. But that's another clash with an Ergamin that's, you know, really enticing one. It was nice to see that form, Frank, because some people would definitely say, well, what's Shiskin beaten so far? But, you know, that's now quite credible, isn't it? It is, yeah. I mean, to be fair, the time performance on the day was... was um, outstanding as well when when Shishkin won because they beat the quick they went quicker than Nubi Negra when when he beat Altior on the same card as Shishkin so that in itself underlined it at the time but you're right to say that people have been crabbing you know what's he beaten and yeah I think we saw on Saturday that Tamrock de Matan is genuinely sort of knocking on for a 150 horse as a novice um, and he's a horse right at the top of his game still improving and he just couldn't lay a glove on on Shishkin. And Martin, just something else to touch on, um, the retirement of Black Corton, who was a horse that has played a pivotal role, really, in Bryony Frost's career. Yeah, a massive part of it. You, you have to go back a few years to 2017-18 season, but he was a fab, fabulous novice chaser, Black Court, and he won, started off in the summer of 2017. We don't often see it where horses start in the summer and they go right the way through the season, but he did. He had the toughness, the constitution to do that. Um, he won eight races as a novice chaser, Black Court, and many of them with Bryony on board, including uh, the Corto Star Grade 1 novice chase at Kempton over the Christmas of that season. So he was a brilliant horse that year. Um, he was sort of the first 
of her big name horses really that that catapulted her into into the big time um so it was a you know very special horse interest nice to hear Bryony talking about um him afterwards but i think it was the right decision he just seemed to have lost his edge his last three starts this year now had been had been disappointing and it seemed like his best days were, were well behind him yeah he gave her such a buzz on so many occasions he won 14 of his 40 starts eight of them were for Bryony and I'll never forget the day when she won on that comeback ride after her collarbone yeah no she, I, exactly she was just puzzling wasn't she and she, he had that sort of style that we've sort of become synonymous to seeing with Bryony Frost where she just goes from the front you know he's uncomplicated gets her horses into a rhythm jumping really well um and that was what what Black Corton was all about and they did strike up a really good relationship. As always we've got our race in focus where we look at a championship race and this week it's the Betway Queen Mother champion chase and before we analyse it and give you our thoughts and selections we can hear from Mansion Bet Ambassador Brian Hughes. My tip for the champion chase is um, Altior. I think he's a big price at 7-1. to one. Um, Obviously Chacan Persoir has won all before him this year but my, and he's odds on but my only worry, he's never been to Cheltenham and he obviously was pulled out at the 11th hour last year. Um, he is a fragile horse to keep in one piece. So I think um, Altior, if he's come back anywhere near his, his best form at 7-1, to one, he's a massive price. Martin, interesting thoughts there from Brian. Altior, a best price 7-1 to one with Mansion Bet. Is he appealing to you? He's not really, Emma, I'll be honest. I, I was so disappointed with him over Christmas at Kempt and just the way that he went through the race he just lacked his his zest his enthusiasm for it um, and obviously he was way below the levels that he was achieving at his peak the fact is that we've just not seen him that much over the last couple of seasons he's had some issues which ine inevitably happens with with many horses as, as they get a little bit older but he just seems to have lost his, his zip lost a little bit of his speed in my opinion and I think we've seen enough in that run alone to think that and, and coupled with his profile generally over the last couple of seasons to think that he's probably not quite the horse that he was at his very best it does seem as if Nicky Henderson might go for some uh, headgear on him he hasn't confirmed it yet but the sort of signs were that, that certainly that's a possibility and something that's under consideration just to try and and get him traveling a little bit better through the champion chase than he did at Kempton don't get me wrong he tried his best but he was no match for Numi Negra um, and he'll need to be at least £10, probably probably more so than that, better at Cheltenham to even to, to have any chance of winning the race. Mm, it'd be some dream performance if he could do it to win an Arkle at the festival and then go on and win uh, two champion chases, 2018 and 19, and come back and do it again would be phenomenal. But he's got uh, what looks a very good one in Chacun Pessoir up against him. Yeah, that's it. I mean, Chacun Porsois himself has, has, has not been the easiest to get to the track, but this season it's all gone pretty seamlessly and you can't sort of hold back what's gone before, I guess, with him because this year he's made the track three times. It's all been, um, as I say, as you would have expected in terms of his campaigning and every single time we've seen him this year, all three starts, he has been on point, putting up top class performances and performances that to be honest with you would probably win the champion chase this year very easily as well yeah he's a dual Dublin chase winner and that was pretty breathtaking wasn't it last time it was a massive performance yeah I mean on the clock it was a big performance as well and that's twice that he's done that already this year but um, he just he traveled so strongly through the race and then picked up quickened away from them from the second last Fakir Dudery was second you know you can you can sort of knock the form a little bit and say that Min was pulled up and didn't give his running so that took a little bit away from the race but it was still a pretty devastating performance from Chacun Porsoir it's not the only time that we've seen it this season and What's in opposition to him, really? We've got an ageing Altior. Um, it, it looks to me like a below-par renewal of the champion chase if you take away Chacun Porsoir. So if he gets anywhere near the levels that he's been showing in Ireland, I think he wins. OK, well, let's have a look at one or two of the others. Nuba Negu was spoken about. Well, he sprang a surprise when he won at 20-1 to 1 at Kempton, getting the better of Altior. He's got more on his plate, hasn't he? And then you've got lovely old Politologue. I was looking through his form. This will be his sixth run at the Cheltenham Festival. Started back in 2016 in a Coral Cup. And then he was fourth in a JLT in 2017. 
couple of times he's been behind um, Altior in this race. And then, of course, he won it last year. He could, you can sort of see him running well, but you'd be surprised if he was to win it, wouldn't you? In the same way that we would have been surprised if he won it 12 months ago, yes. Um, he will need other horses, I think, to underperform. Last year, it was Defi de Soy that didn't fire on the day. The door was left ajar. Politilog was there to take advantage. I think he would need Chacun Porsoir to, to not give his running. It's as simple as that. It might happen. But actually, yes, I agree that Politilog is very likely to run his race. He's very likely to run well. He has been consistent. He's an each-way option for the race. You'd be getting a profit if he was in the first three. He's a double-figure price with most bookmakers. Um, so you'd be getting a profit if he was in the first three. And to be honest, I would expect that he will be because this season he's, he has been very consistent but like I say if Chacun Porsoir gives his running uh, it's pretty much his race for the taking. You touched on Nubi Negra Emma, well I'm not sure about the track for him, obviously it was a good performance at, at Christmas but there is that doubt about that the strength of that form, as I said the time was slower than Shishkin had produced, Altior wasn't at his best, neither were some of the other horses it was a shock on the day and He'll probably run well, and I've no doubt he's an improving horse, but I'm not sure that Cheltenham and the stiff nature of the track there will be right up his street because he's such a fast horse. So to summarise it, Chacun Bessoir is a short price favourite. He looks very solid, but is he banker material? I mean, there's some standout ones of the week. Does he fall into that category? Yeah, I mean, it, to, be, to be fair, it is sort of an appealing each-way race to some extent. Paletalog would be an option. Sir Royal would be another option. Non-runner, no bet. If the ground dries up, Alan King will let him take his chance. He goes um, into the race in good form after the game spirit win. But to be perfectly honest, although there are some appealing each-way options, I do think that Shaq and Bossoir is ultimately a, a banker material. I mean, like I say, if he gets... Five pound within what he's been showing in Ireland, he wins pretty much on the bridle. I'd say in the Champion Chase, I think he'll win win easily. Yeah, I have to say I totally agree. I think he does look uh, a standout for the week, and he looks a horse with phenomenal talent. So that is our summary of the Betway Champion Chase. Martin, thanks very much, and we'll be back again soon.